The things that make men successful, many times a lot of people in their search for it, they think they are complicated. Amen. A lot of times people are looking for secret keys that they think have been hidden from ancient times. People are looking for mysterious things that they think if they have this thing, they will succeed. Amen. Who could have imagined that um, some of the things that could make men become very great and successful in this life and even sustain nations was always under their feet? Amen. Today, nations live off on oil, petroleum that was found underground. And yet, that thing had been there from time immemorial. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to just take a good look at yourself at this moment. If there's a way you can see yourself or ponder upon it, what is that thing? that may be inside of me that is dormant now that can change my life. Amen. Africa has petroleum. Many of you come from oil-producing countries. We've always had it. And there were things, those things was always available to us, even at the time when people were starving. Praise God. Gold. Many nations have always had gold. They sat upon it, but they did not realize that what they needed to change their life, they already had. Praise God. Look at that, that your neighbor and tell the person, you already have what you need. To become great. Praise God. It is one of those great things, those things that make men great that I want to talk about today. Simple as it may seem, yet, uh, as we would see, it is a very important character and quality that makes men successful. A lot of times people neglect it. But I want to say that if you really want to go find this life, this thing I'm about to talk to you about today is some of, is one of those, thing, those things you cannot afford to ignore. I'm praying to God that at the end of today's service, someone would seriously pay attention to this thing. Praise God. We gave an intro last week. We started entering into it. Today I want to wrap up on it because of other things we still have to teach in this group of selected topics. I want to put an end to um, what we started last week on submission. Praise God. Tell me submission. Submission. So I want to teach on a message titled, The Beauty of Submission. The what? The Beauty of Submission. The Beauty of Submission. Praise God. The Beauty of Submission. What separates one person from another person, one successful person from another person who is not so successful, a billionaire from another person who is not a billionaire, many times has something to do with submission. And I'll prove it to you today, like I began to last week. Statistically speaking, by my own observation and study of people and history and different fields of life, I would say that 90% of people, and this is me being very kind, um, Actually, it's way more than that. When I say 90% of people uh, struggle to submit, 90% of people struggle to submit. And today, when I give some examples, you understand why that statistics is true. Let's begin first by looking at some scriptures. Matthew, the third chapter from the 15th verse. Matthew, the third chapter from the 15th verse. Every great person must learn to be a submissive person. In the verses that precede this particular verse, we see that Jesus Christ comes before John. And Jesus is standing before John and bows, actually kneels down and bows down for there to be baptism. Jesus, the word of God, the great I am, the one who, in whom the spirit was given to without measure, obviously. Jesus Christ is standing before a man an ordinary man in the person of John the Baptist. And he says, John, I want you to baptize me. It's not so much about the baptism only or the kneeling only, but what baptism means. If you realize what baptism was doing in those days, the baptism was a symbol of the washing away of the sins of men. So, you hear John before Jesus Christ shows up telling people, why, you, why do you come to me? Who, you brood of vipers, who tells you to come for the baptism? Why are you changing? Why are you moving away from your old ways? And Jesus Christ is coming to be baptized, and yet, unlike every other person who had baptized before him, who had come to be baptized before him, Jesus Christ had no sin. 
Am I talking to somebody? Jesus did not have any sin to wash away, not symbolically or practically. But Jesus is coming to kneel before a man. The man that leaped to see his day in the womb. The same man who says, I'm not worthy to untie your shoelaces. Jesus Christ comes and he's right there, submitting not just to the man, submitting to what his ministry represents, which is the washing away of sins. And that person is trying to stop Jesus, right? I said, no, you should, I should not be the one who is baptized, who is being baptized right now. You should not be the one being baptized. I should be, should be the one experiencing baptism. But look at what Jesus says. Jesus answering said unto him, suffer it to be so now. Let it be like that right now. Tell anybody, let it be like that right now. Say, let it be like that right now. You see, when we talk about submission, I want to say this. It is not only for women. I'll say this again. It is not for women only. And I know every time there was a lot of ladies hear the word submission, it's always as if it is directed at them. No, 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 no. We're talking about a global situation here that a lot of people struggle with, both men and women. So, but we are seeing now Jesus Christ proving. There is, I'm starting with Jesus because you have to realize that the call to submission is not a call only to women, and it's not a call only to a specific gender, and it's not a call only to, you know, um, let's say a certain career or profession. Jesus himself, it starts from our example, Jesus, our role model. Jesus was a submissive person. Jesus is saying, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. The only way we are going to fulfill all righteousness, me doing my part, you doing your part, is if I here right now submit to you. Hallelujah. If I come now and submit to your ministry, there is something that is about to happen. If I will do this thing, praise God. The reason some people never get promoted, the reason some people never get announced, the reason some people never go higher in life is because of this thing. Because you realize what happens afterwards. When Jesus did that, the Spirit of the Lord, what? Announced him. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord announced him. The reason some people never get announced in life is their lack of submission. Praise the Lord. He said it becomes to us to fulfill what? All righteousness. All of it. This is just one of the many examples. If you go to Luke, Luke the 22nd chapter, let's see another one. Luke 22, verse 42. Luke 22, verse 42. So we see, Jesus' ministry begins with submission. Jesus' ministry wraps up again with a test of his submission. Amen. Now, it reaches a point where the highlight of Jesus' ministry and career, Jesus is about to die. Okay? Things begin to get tough. I want to be sincere with you, and I have to tell you, you know, um, submission is not easy. Praise God. I have to be sincere with you. You see, because if it was easy, Jesus, even Jesus would not struggle at this point. So I say that to um, really be open to you that there are going to be tough times where it may be difficult for you to submit. Okay? There are going to be tough times where it may be difficult. And that is why I would like you to stay with me because you can absolutely do something to help you to become more submissive. There's something you can do. Praise God. No person was born a genius or specially graced to submit. No. Nobody. There's no such person. It comes with practice and intentional activity and building on it again and again and again. So we see a situation here. Um, the main purpose Jesus Christ came for, suddenly there is opposition. Can I be sincere with somebody here? Some of you, you are going to, your biggest struggle will be in the thing, your biggest struggle to submit will be in that same area or place where you are supposed to be blessed. Are you listening to me? It is not so much the place where it is easy as much as the place where it is difficult. And that's why you are going to have difficult times in some places and in some areas of your life submitting. But right there in that place is where your breakthrough will come from. I haven't had a beautiful three and a half year of ministry. You, 
you, you think that, you know, by now Jesus Christ, you know, should be an expert in submitting. No, but here it became difficult. In the place where it mattered the most, it was, it was tough. And the Bible says that evening, right there, he began to sweat profusely. So much so that his sweat was as blood. It was difficult. When he suddenly imagined what it would take, what it was going to cost him, and the implication of his submitting. But to go high in life, you have to pass through that school. Amen. So me to go high in life. There are schools I must follow. Yes. So Jesus is now with the Father. Last week we looked at one of the one of the things we looked at is learning to submit to God. He says, submit to God and resist the devil. And what? He will flee from you. So, so we know that submission is not only unto men. We looked at ordinances of men last time. But here now we are looking at God. And Jesus is at a point where he needs to submit to God. You think it will be easy. No, my friend, it's not always easy. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? It's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy for you to have to pray, but you need to pray. Am I talking to somebody? It's not easy for you to fast, but what? Amen. And I said something last week very quick, and I hope you haven't forgotten. I said the bedrock of what we call discipline, okay, is what? Submission. A person who is Submissive will not struggle to be disciplined. A person who is what? Will not what? I said it again. Let me remind you in case you forgot because the way you're looking at me. Praise the Lord. It is not so much about what is outside as it is submitting to what is inside. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you, show you now a bit more, throw more light. When you learn to be a submissive person, not just to the things outside, but if you can be submissive even to your very self, that's what we call discipline. Hallelujah. And I'll prove it. But herein, we, we find Jesus Christ. Suddenly, his will begins to speak. There are some of you here, the problem is the voice that is speaking, the, odd, the you, amen. It is a battle between you and God. It's a battle between you and your department leader. It's a battle between you and the book. It's a battle between you and your goals. Your own goals. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a battle between you and your own money. Your money, you and your money are fighting. Your money said, no, don't use me. If you use me like this, you are going to be broke. He said, no, we must spend this money. Amen. So we'll find, we'll find a fight. I'll, I'll shed share, more light. But here we're finding it now. There is a will. It's the same father. If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Jesus Christ is trying to bargain now. But he says, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Not my will, but what? Thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. So Jesus is surrendering or submitting his will under God's own. Am I talking to somebody? I said something last week in a, in a message I titled Submission. If you have not watched it, I recommend you go watch it. If you watch it, watch it again. Praise God. Submission. So God has a mission. Jesus has come with a submission. And it reaches a point where Jesus must execute his mission. And it became, begins to be tough. Now Jesus Christ says, yeah, I remember. It is not about me about you. I came to do the mission you sent me, not the mission I want. Am I talking to somebody? Hello? I don't know if you're getting me. Do you realize Amen. If Jesus did not execute this mission, what would have happened to humanity and also even himself? He would have been stuck here forever. Hello? He would have what? Some people are stuck where they are stuck because they are unwilling to submit. They are unwilling to pay the price to submit to the temp oh hallelujah to the temporary disciplines. 
to the temporary challenges and sufferings and pain. The man of God put it like this. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen. Hallelujah. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So here he's standing before Jesus Christ. A cross, a pain, shame, mockery, bleeding, death. And sometimes some of you, the thing that is in front of you that you need to submit to is tough. Amen. It's tough. Waking up at 5 a.m. is tough. It hurts you. Makes so much more sense to sleep a little bit more. Hallelujah. It's tough. It's tough to say no to that your favorite meal. It's tough. Amen. And imagine yourself letting go of that thing. But you know how many calories are in it. Amen. And it's your dream to have a summer body. Hallelujah. But now we are ready in April. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. See my summer body. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory. Amen. And there was January, and January was telling you, girl, cut down on this thing. You're like, don't worry, I'll start in February. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> it hurts. When you do those sit-ups for the first time, it hurts. Take two months break. <laughs> two whole months break. <laughs> two months, not two days, not two weeks, not two hours, two months. Because <laughs> it hurts. Amen. You do it, you're asking yourself, who sent me? Who sent me? Who sent me? Praise God, who sent me? I'll show you. If thou be willing, Remove this cup from me. He said, but nevertheless, not my will. Praise the Lord. Show me not my will. Say, not my will. He says, but thine be done. The greater glory. Amen. The greater good. He says, no, I'll endure the pain. I'll endure the shame for the greater good. Praise the Lord. I'll endure the pain. Praise God. I'll endure the pain. I cut down on that food. Amen. I cut down on those food. Praise Jesus. Amen. Philippians, the second chapter, the sixth verse. So we see Jesus Christ here, even at the point of death, surrender or submit. The Bible puts it in a very good way here. Speaking about Jesus Christ, he says, that Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. What God is saying here now is that even though Jesus was like God, okay, Actually, he is God. He did not consider that in making his choices and decision. Okay? He did not consider it. Go to verse 7. So there are some translations that put it better. He said, but this Jesus made himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. He made himself of what? To be submissive. Huh? You must make yourself, your will, of no reputation. It means don't let it count. Are you getting me? Don't what? Don't let it count. Amen. You know, last, week, last, last month I couldn't really enter or teach it this way. So I'll say it right now. There has to be a point in your life, okay, where your own opinion, okay, doesn't count. If you want to go far in life, your own opinion, what? Where your feelings don't count. Hello? 
today, today I don't feel like going to the gym. That's your opinion. It doesn't count. I'm going to go somebody. A point must come in your life where you have become addicted to doing the right thing. Not because you like it, but because it's the right thing. Am I talking to someone? This is something successful people understand. This is why, this is why you have in the world, you have the let's say the 5% who control the wealth of the 95%. They didn't get there following their opinions. They didn't get there following their feelings. They too felt like sleeping. Amen. They had gotten so used to not following their feelings that suddenly their feelings became the right thing. Am I talking to somebody? Why do you eat what you eat? Because you like it. Because you enjoy it. It doesn't matter whether it is good, nice, healthy or not. Because you like it. Because it tastes nice. You eat it. You eat one plate of food that will take you three months to, to remove, to, to get it out of your body. As you are eating it, you know the, what is the, the amount of calories in this thing. You know what is going to happen next. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect your body. It's going to affect everything. You just keep going. Why? You're following your feelings. Hallelujah. But a point would reach where you are supposed to stop following what you want. Amen. Hallelujah. Why are you eating the food? Because I'm supposed to eat it. Are you enjoying it? It doesn't matter. It's what I'm supposed to eat. Just eat doesn't matter. It has no business with it. You know, are you enjoying it? Who cares about enjoying it? Just eat. Eat and be healthy. Eat and be alive. I'm not speaking to somebody. Just eat. Praise God. There are people in hospital beds today who got there. They knew how they got there. Same thing with those who smoke. You know this thing can kill you. When there are people... You must make yourself of no reputation. Your opinion don't count. So today I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like going to the gym. Why? It's not a feeling thing. Amen. I'm talking about submission now. Praise the Lord. Tell me submission. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus intentionally submitted himself to this. Go to the next. And being found in fashion as a man, he what? He humbled himself. He put himself under. So me, Jesus was submissive. He was submissive. Uh, guys, listen to me. Listen to me. You know, I, I, I do, you, do you realize the Jesus we're talking about here? You know, I, I, I wish, I wish God, I, I pray God will open your mind to understand. Do you realize the Jesus we are talking about here? The same person the Bible says was of like passion. He was tempted in every way, just as you are. Look at that, your neighbor. Say that's your temptation. Even Jesus experienced it. impossible for him to have won if he was not a submissive person. So, why are people falling into temptations many times? Lack of submission. I'll prove it. He 
He humbled himself. Hiya. Amen. Praise the Lord. Show me submission. Show me submission. Submission. What makes a man be alone with a girl? Okay. Grown up adults. Okay. You are with a girl. Two of you are in a place. Nobody will see you. This woman is touching you funny now. The light is green. The whole room is a green wall. Everything is green. This is, there's no guesswork. Green light. Two of you alone. And the man goes on to say, God forbid that I should do this evil thing. Hello, somebody. Say, God forbid that I should do this evil thing against my master. For he has given me everything in this house except you. God forbid. What makes a man pick himself and run? Hello? Grown up adult, naked. Yeah, I think you didn't picture that part. He's running naked. I'm talking about submission. This was a man who he was fully submitted to the covenant he had made. There was nobody watching him to say, oh, we caught you. It was not a trap. There were no spy cams on the walls. It was submission to an agreement. Say me an agreement. That's what I'm talking about. Hello, somebody. Can you, can you imagine now if you had that attitude since January? Where the thing you wrote down as your goals for 2021, you yourself were, you were committed to not break it. Am I talking to somebody? You were ready. And instead of me to break this covenant, I run out naked. <laughs> Amen. Instead of me to skip a day of not doing my exercise, I run out naked. Submission is putting yourself under. I've seen the reason people do not succeed many times in life. They have goals, they have plans, but they don't have penalties. The day I try to break this, what will I do? In a country where you know, you can, you can, of course, nobody stops you. You can, of course, go ahead and just go through this traffic, the, the traffic light, no problem. But there's a penalty by the side. These penalties that put men in shape. So, they, so Joseph had said something to himself. Instead of me to cheat against you in this place, it doesn't matter how much I want it. Where was he when the court was being taken off of him? I think he was not feeling something too. He was a grown adult man. I would say he ran out. He says, God forbid. He was running. He was running. God forbid. Hallelujah. So me subjection. So the main reason a lot of people do not succeed is they are unable to submit even to themselves. They love themselves so much. They are so liberal to themselves and kind to themselves in a wrong way. Say, I can't come and kill myself. Bring food, Joe. Ah, well, I've not eaten, uh, I've not eaten chocolate for weeks. Let me eat chocolate now. You just eat and eat and eat and eat. All the ones you have not eaten for two weeks, you eat it in one day. Say, God, we understand.
Hallelujah. Let them go. Praise God. Let them go. And being found in fashion as a man, he what? He what? Joseph humbled himself. Hello? 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 I don't think you... I don't know if you're getting me. You realize what that scripture is saying. To Joseph, it was more important for him to keep himself than for him to be found naked.